When we're ready. We're on. All right, ready. guys. Get my ESPN off there. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to welcome everyone to the planning and zoning meeting for tonight, Thursday, March the 4th, 2021. Our first order of business tonight will be uh, our public hearing and public comment policy to talk about. So uh, we'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Burks. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, Mr. Burks, if you want to kind of take us through our new policy that we've kind of created here. Okay, the, the public hearing policy, public comments. First, yes, sir. The, city, the city staff will present request inclusions and necessary items into the record. Applicants slash representatives will be given 10 minutes to present projects and info. Public will be given five minutes to provide comments when buzzer goes off, 30 additional seconds given to conclude remarks. After the public has spoken, applicants will be given five minutes to address any issues slash concerns brought forth during public comments. This dialogue is with the board and not the public. Speakers shall not directly question applicants. All comments are to be directed to board, mayor, or attorney. On zoning matters that do not require public hearing, the same protocol will be followed during the public comments section of each zoning item. At no time, the speakers are allowed to yield their time to another speaker to allow more than five minutes. Discussion during the agenda, item discussions and comments for board only will occur, no public input. And I will be taking care of the timekeeping for that. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Welcome. Okay. Uh, so having went through our new policy there, we're going to start off with our public hearings for this evening. And our first public hearing will be a continuation from our last month's meeting when we had some uh, technology issues and it's section 405.280, telecommunications towers and facilities, amendment-115. Uh, someone want us to bring us up to speed on that real quickly? So section 405.280, telecommunication towers and facility ADM-115. Uh, the amendment to repeal and replace municipal code with exhibit A regarding telecommunication towers and facilities. Uh, the public hearing notice was posted in Warren County record on February 11th, 2021. Staff re recommends approval of section 405.208 repealing and replacing municipal code with exhibit A regarding telecommunication towers and facilities. Thank you, Mr. Burks. Is there anyone that's tonight that wouldn't want to speak on behalf or against uh, section 405.280? Hearing none, we'll close that public hearing and open up our next public hearing, which is section 405.281, construction and deployment of small wireless facilities, amendment-116. And it was also continued from our last meeting. Mr. Burks? Okay, section 405.281, construction and deployment of small wireless facilities, ABM-116. Uh, this section is a construction and deployment of small wireless facility. The public notice was posted in Warren County record on January 4th, 2021. The staff recommends approval of establishing procedure and requirements for section 405.281, construction and deployment of small wireless facility. Thank you, Mr. Burks. Anyone want to speak on behalf or against this um, uh, 405.281? Hearing none, we'll close that public hearing. Our next public two public hearings were withdrawn by the applicant from the last month that we started, and uh, they will be coming back at a later date, we assume. So uh, uh, we'll skip those two for now. Does anybody have anything that they needed to add on that or? No, nope. so let's just move on to our last public hearing tonight and that will be the Park Hills zone change, uh, ZC-67. So Mr. Burks, you wanna bring us up to speed on that one and then we'll turn it over to, uh, I think the next person to speak will be Bart, is that correct? Is that correct? Is Bart on, yes. Okay, so Mr. Burks, you wanna bring us up to speed on, our, on the city staff in? Okay, Park Hill zone change, ZZ-67. Uh, 
As a preliminary matter for this public hearing, I will ask the publication notice published in the Warren County record be made part of the record by reference. The comprehensive plan and municipal code of the city of Warren can be made part of the record by reference. The planning and zoning officer's report be made part of the record by reference. This application, the applicant would be Ben Beckmeyer Construction, LLC, uh, 27086 Courtney Place Circle, Warrington, Missouri, 63383. It's a rezoning uh, from Ag to R3. It's a 35.34 acres of plot on the west side of South Morgan Street, approximately 1,500 feet south of West Walton Street. Um, project summary, Corey Agenfell on behalf of Ben Beckmeyer has submitted an application to change for a change in zoning from for a 35.34 acre site. Um, the request is to rezone the area from agricultural district to R3 high density residential district. The future land map designates this parcel as a single family resident. The parcel is bordered by conservative re residential to the west, single family residential to the south, open slash recreation to the east, and light industrial to the north. The surrounding development, the subject site is adjacent to several zoning districts as shown in the, on the diagram shown in general, the subject site is bordered by non-residential use to the north, residential to the east and south, and agricultural to the west. Uh, the staff analysis rezoning request, the subject the site is identified as in the comprehensive plan for future single resident or single family development and reviewing the characteristics of the subject track. Uh, the presence of Big Creek running north and south through the site defines the subject site. Uh, below is an image showing the FEMA flood and hazard information on this site. Staff recommendation, the staff has reviewed and request to rezone the subject site from agricultural reserve to a district, to R3 high density residential district. All items and notices are required by the state and local law have been provided and complete. While the proposal is consistent with future land map use, staff is of the opinion that the purpose change in the zoning for the western portion of the site is premature doing due to inadequate inadequate infrastructure to serve the development. Additionally, created a creation of a neighborhood entrance through industrial park is inconsistent with good planning practice. The staff is in support of change in zoning from AG Agricultural Reserve to R3 High Density Residential District for the portion of the subject site lane east of Big Creek. Thank you, Mr. Bricks. Well, okay, so uh, that is the public hearing. Uh, since this is our first night that we're implementing this, I, I just got to remind myself one more time. Do we wait till the public comments to let Bart speak or do we do that now? We, we do that now. This is still part of the public hearing. The public hearing is still open. So now oh, Bart you. will do his 10 minute presentation, minutes. that portion, and then we'll go through five for any speakers that wanna speak. And then we'll come back to public comment. Okay, thank you. So Mr. Corman, if you're, if you're on board, you have the next 10 minutes, buddy. Uh, I don't think I have that one. I don't, I, I, work, I work for that applicant, but not on this project, so there might be somebody else. Uh, okay, I think there. it's Mr. Beckemeyer. I think he's on here. I see a screen, but he's muted. I don't know if he's doing his wants to do anything during his 10 minute time. They don't have to, just so it's clear for right. the public. They have a yeah. maximum of 10 minutes. It's whoever wants to do it. They don't have to. Uh, then we sure. can move on to the next speakers if necessary. Right, correct. Is anybody here representing that applicant? Yes, sir. And state your name for the record. Ben Beckemeyer. Okay, Mr. Beckemeyer, you want, you want to take a few minutes to tell us what's going on? Yes, sir. We're trying to develop this 
plat for single family residential, as Mr. Burke said, I was unaware that they didn't want to proceed with the west side, but it, that's here or there, I guess. I was going to start with the east side anyway, coming off of Morgan Street, but it's uh, pretty straightforward, single family residential, R3. There's quite a few R3 zonings right around there. It should be, you know, pretty simple, but uh, I got some comments. We've addressed most of the city's comments for the plat that we turned in and just waiting to move forward. Okay, thank you, Mr. Beckermeyer. Okay, uh, is there anybody from the public that would like to utilize their five minutes at this time? Hey, Rich, this is Charlie Nordwall. Is this time for me to speak? Yes, Mr. Nordwall, speak. You spoke your name for the record, Charlie Nordwall. You're, you got the floor. Yeah, I, first off, I own my wife and I own the property right next to this, and we don't necessarily have a problem with that. I guess what I have a problem with is what I talked to Mr. Burke about Monday is the fact that uh, I'm all for development in the city of Warrington, but we live about, oh, two and a half or three miles north of Warrington, right on Big Creek, and we catch all the storm water that comes out of the city of Warrington. And what it has done over a period of the last 10 years, it is wreaking havoc with our farm and the fact that when we did Rule King and we did Walmart and we did the uh, uh, various different shopping centers and down there where uh, uh, some of the, sub the developments going on along the South Service Road, we're catching all that water. And there's no way to control it on our end. And my only concern is I have no problem with the subdivision, but I think there needs to be some thought given to what do we do about water retention? Because we, we, we've lived here on this farm for nearly 100 years of what my family has, and the creek is beginning, is, continues to be a bigger and bigger issue. And it's not that we're catching that much more water, but we're catching it much more, more quickly and more uh, violently than what we used to. We used to have a lot of trees and grass and stuff to slow the water down, which they have been removed. You can just see what happened out of Rural King when that went in. We're catching all that water in a matter of a couple of hours, and it's tearing our creek banks up. And Mayor Sleater has been out here to look at it. He can talk to it. Um, Presiding Commissioner Guildhouse has been here and looked at it. DNR has been here to look at it. Conservation Department has been here to look at it. They offer up no solutions other than the fact that we need to make some type of provisions in the city of Warrington that we retain some of that water and let it out on a more uh, controllable basis. That's our concern. Thank you, Mr. Nordwell. Can Mr. Burks can, and I don't know if this is something to do with the city. Can somebody tell us what's going on along South Service Road there with all the movement? I mean, I know that's Big Creek that goes through there, correct? I'm sorry, you're talking what road? Uh, South Service Road, of the, south of the interstate, go, the heads out to the there. mall. Yeah, I believe that's all the new interceptor, with the new wastewater that's going out to our new wastewater treatment, for the treatment plants, the expansion. That's okay. the um, interceptor. Well, I know they were starting to work right there. Right? Can you please mute your phone real quick because it's providing a lot of background noise. Who's that? Me? Yes. Yeah. There we go. Great. Thank you. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. That's fine. So that, well, at first they started working right there on that bridge and I thought they were doing something with that because I know that all comes out, you know, right there behind the school and the movie theater. Is that Big Creek still right there? That's where it starts. That's what I'm thinking. Because I know that's a 100-year floodplain there because I lived there back in the early 90s in a mobile home and uh, had to elevate our trailer a hundred, or another foot due to the government regulations of that. And uh, I thought they were doing something to control the water there at that time, but that's wastewater as well. We're, I actually mm -hmm. just learned that today. Okay. Yeah. We get all the water from Snooks and... Uh... All off, you know, from the Vinky parking lots and all that. That all comes through our farm. Right. And then it heads up north towards uh, where it crosses 47, correct, eventually? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. And I'm all about development, you know, uh, uh, but yeah. I just, I want to, I want to, I want to be able to live too. Right. Well, we appreciate your comments there, sir. Thank you, Mr. Nordwell. Thank you. 
Anybody else want five minutes? Yes, we have somebody that is at Forest Ridge. Yeah, hi, my name is Alexander at Forest Ridge Court. <clears throat> I just had a quick question um, pertaining. Hey, Alex. Alexander, can you hold on one sec? Yeah. Okay, I think I think Charlie muted his phone because it was, it, I think we're picking up radio. Go ahead, sorry. Okay. Well, I was just was making sure I heard in the beginning that the West End was no longer in consideration. I'm just trying to understand, I guess, if we are no longer in that path, uh, if our subdivision is within that footage of whatever's going on in the rezoning. Forest Ridge. <clears throat> let me, let me jump in that? here. This is Chris Gravel, Chairman Barton. Uh, I think Thank I can you. maybe elaborate on that, that uh, recommendation from city staff. Um, okay. You know, their city staff has some concerns about that western part, although the comprehensive plan supports it as single family residential and the the rezone request is consistent. The infrastructure is not in place, uh, at least planned out for the roads. There's a question of whether Coleman Road can handle the traffic. Um, it sounds like there's a stormwater question that we probably need to look at for their area of the city as well. So. I, I think the idea is what the recommendation is, is at this time, it's not recommended that it be rezoned until that infrastructure collectively is addressed. We're not done. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Reville. Thank you, Alex. Anyone else speak tonight? Yes, can I get Alexander's last name, please? Francis, F-R-A-N-C. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, I. my name is Mary Ryan, and I'm also within the Forest Ridge. When that infrastructure, if you do get that, will there be another planning meeting like this? Um, I would imagine that uh, it's up to the applicant how they want to approach this. But as I think, I don't want to speak for Mr. Beckermeyer, he'll have a chance later to give five minutes to speak and respond. But, you know, I'm sure they eventually want to develop it. It sounded like that was their plan. Maybe they do this first half and probably work with the city. So I would imagine they'll either withdraw the request for that other half or they'll, they'll um, uh, you know, have it, that portion denied, move on with what they have and come back and request a rezone at some point in the future. When that rezone comes back again, then yes, there will be a second public hearing, you know, uh, that would occur. And then we'll be notified by a letter just like we were this last time. To the city's best ability, they will try to notify you by letter. I would also recommend regularly checking the city's website and also looking in the Warren County record where the actual public hearing notice is published. Just sometimes the letters don't always get there. so. I don't want you to say, well, you said I'd get a letter and I didn't and something happens. We do our best to send everybody a letter within that 180 foot radius. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mary. You're welcome. Anyone else? Yes, we have Brad. Yeah, hey, my name is Brad Booz. Cruz, uh, live at 319 South Morgan. Uh, I guess I'm a little unclear. So you can only, you, at this meeting, I thought the whole area was going to be, uh, it was up for rezone. So you can just choose and pick what parts you want done or can you explain to me how this is gonna work? Well, the only thing I can explain to you, Mr. Boozy Cruz, is what staff's recommendation is. Staff is recommending on the Eastern half that the infrastructure, it's, it's, re it, it, it's consistent with the comprehensive plan, which drives the rezoning. It's consistent with the comprehensive plan. And because it's consistent with the comprehensive plan, staff is recommending, yes, that should be rezoned on the, I think it's the north side of the creek or east side of the creek. On the other side, there's not a clearly laid out plan at this point for ingress egress. Um, the entire parcel is up for consideration. However, the city staff is saying, this part is not ready to handle this load of development. Now, what planning and zoning makes a recommendation on, that's independent. This is just staff's analysis and staff's 
review and recommendation. And ultimately what uh, the Board of Aldermen does and the mayor does with staff recommendation and planning and zoning recommendation, I can't predict that. Okay, but now I'm a little concerned. And you know, I know I'm with Charlie on the uh, water because we've noticed a tremendous amount more water coming down through Big Creek and uh, South and the other one off of, uh, I guess it would be coming on the north side of, of the tennis court that the water, so are you going to, how are you going to address that as far as the rezoning part? Are you going to take up the creek and address that or come back from the creek? I mean, there's a lot of things just, you know, rezoning if this is all going to be part of the, I guess, how, how are you going to do this with the, the stormwater if you're going to rethink this? So I, I'm a little concerned because I think some of Mr. Beckmeyer's uh, lots go butt up to that creek. So is that going to interfere with him? You know, if, if you say, yeah, yeah, go ahead and do the east side of, uh, of the creek, that's going to you know, you're, uh, I guess I don't quite understand how, how you're going to address this here for all, all of us around how, how this is going to be handled. So the design of a uh, subdivision will be done in the preliminary and final plat stage. They'll have stormwater requirements that are required to meet our code, infrastructure improvements on site that are required to meet our code. Um, the concern about the infrastructure on the western side is the offsite infrastructure accessing the property. One of the things that Mr. Burks will do will be he will make a note from tonight's meeting to look into the stormwater concerns, check with our planner, check with city staff with regards to that stormwater to see how this development will, will affect on, on the property and offsite as well. Um, and that's something if, if it's on the eastern part or the one side of the creek, um, you know, then, you know, we'll bring some information back for uh, the Board of Aldermen when they consider it as well so we can address that question. Or even for planning and zoning if they want us to bring that information back to them. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Musicruz. Anyone else speak tonight? This is Dan Musicruz. Hang on just one second. One person, Dan? Yes, thank you. This is this is Dan Musicruz. Okay, Mr. Musicruz, go ahead. I live at uh, 321 South Morgan. And if you uh, look at your plat map and you look on the right bottom corner, uh, property is in that notch. So that notch is where we um, are. Um, having lived here uh, for a relatively short period of time, but the ground being in our family for 98 years this year, uh, what I have seen living here is that we have a, I call it a utility drain. I'm not sure it, it is that, but it, it goes uh, from the back notch on the left-hand side, all the way to the uh, South Morgan Drive. And over behind the pool, there is a drainage ditch that is concrete. And it picks up all the storm water that is on uh, South Side and South Market. Now it comes across Morgan Street through a culvert under the street and then hits a you can call it a ditch, you can call it a waterway, but when it gets to the back of my property line, it's about five feet deep. There should probably be changes made there because there was a new house built on that corner about a year ago, and there was another culvert added from that driveway into that ditch. And that ditch has never, I guess, been dug out, and I'm not sure if public works should be involved in evaluating um, you know, that utility ditch, because as Mr. Norwald was alluding to, we have seen in three years that the back of our property line with Big Creek and the amount of volume of water that now comes uh, from the east traveling west, all utility ditch and tributary, 
has increased tenfold. And during a one inch rain, and I've been there and measured it, uh, back across the back of that property line where Big Creek exits us and goes down to Holland and goes underneath uh, by their facility and through there, a one inch rain will increase the depth of Big Creek by over four feet deep and over 10 feet wide. And it has made some major erosion and changes on the property that we now live on. And we've seen that changed ever since we saw uh, <laughs> development occur and water comes from, of course, Big Creek starts not too far from where we are. And Lake Chateau also uh, goes into Big Creek and you've got the Specter uh, Lake going into Big Creek. So you have got a tremendous amount of runoff with the uh, Bruny development uh, occurring with all the roofs, rooftops and households that now are, you know, becoming with nowhere to go other, th other than Big Creek. So we have seen some major changes occur uh, in that creek. And there has also been times where we've seen, uh, and I'm not sure what the uh, sewer line is, but there have been numerous times that the city has been down here on our property when the sewer uh, lids have blown off of the sewer due to issues coming from Bruni this way, going across our property and then down to the corner of, of uh, Holland Manufacturing. So I just wonder, you know, I want to make sure that, you know, we have everything in place at the right place so we don't have any, you know, any additional flooding downstream. We're all living together. We all want to see progress. Mr. Beckemeyer is an excellent builder. He works with a friend of mine that's in the, in the real estate business and builds quality homes. We couldn't be more excited uh, to, have, one minute left. to have Ben being next to us. But we just want to make sure that he's protected as well as we're protected. You know, Ben hasn't lived on a site. We've lived here. We've seen how uh, Big Creek has changed. But it's a major tributary now, and it's a major concern for us that live here, you know, to make sure that, you know, the city is doing everything within its power that it needs to do to address these issues. So if there is a way that landowners can be involved, if, you know, if I can be involved in the conversation to see if we can, how we can best solve this problem, I'm more than willing to do that. So thank you. I just wanted, you know, to, to put that out there. So thank, thank you, you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Bruce Cruz, for your time. That was good comments. Brandy, anyone else? I don't show yes. anyone else. Okay. I'll give another second to hear everybody. Okay, we want to go back to Mr. Beckemeyer then. If he wants to address any of the comments that were given to him tonight. Yes, sir. Okay, Mr. Beckemeyer, you got the floor. Um. So some of the issues, I'm, I'm not sure um, with uh, Forest Ridge as far as what they meant by the rezoning affecting them. Um, our, our property doesn't affect any zoning in Forest Ridge. But uh, um, as far as the stormwater, a stormwater analysis will be done. Everything will be done and sent to the city. DNR permits, all of that stuff will be done. We're not trying to flood anyone or do anything like that. We've got quite a bit and actually a little bit overboard on the detention basins and stuff that we have designed for this. Um, some of the water that is already going through the ditch that uh, Mr. Boozikers was talking about, can't do anything about that. It comes off of another piece of property and not off of what ours will be putting into the creek. Um, but, and down the creek, a couple of three miles across the highway, I, I can't speak to that either. I mean, we're gonna do everything we can to make it as easy as possible on the creek and everybody around us. And like I say, all the all the analysis and stormwater retention and everything will be designed and approved by the city and should be pretty easy on it. Um, we, we, we left a big area in the center of this property you can see for stormwater detention there's an acre and a half almost right there and it should hold and slow down a lot of the water from the west side if we get that far and then there's also three or four other smaller detention basins in there so I mean, we're trying to do everything we can because I know this has been an issue with 
other people that have tried to develop along the creek. Thank you, Mr. Beckerman. All right, Brandy, we're done with public hearings as far as you know. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and close our public hearings for this evening and open up our public comment section. And the first public comment will be the Goodfellow Boundary Line Adjustment, Lot 4A and 4B, Subdivision-86. Uh, Mr. Burks, you wanna bring us up to speed on that? Um, it's gonna be the Goodfellow Subdivision property is located at 439 South Morgan Street. It's a uh, boundary line adjustment plant, SUV D-86. Uh, zoning is R2, medium density, single family residential district and R3 high density residential district. The applicant is Huey Roadheaver at 5550 Highway T, Augusta, Missouri 6332. Um, Huey Roadheaver has submitted an application for a boundary line adjustment flat for the 19.38 acres around the land on the west side of South Morgan Street and north and west of the tennis of Bernie Parkway. Uh, staff analysis, the staff would note the following features of the proposed boundary line plat. The area is zoned residential under the previous of the R2 medium district or density residential district and R3 high density residential district. Uh, any further developments of this area is subject to review and ensure compliance with all previous uh, provision of the R2 and R3 districts and the city code requirements. Comprehensive plan designates this area as single family residential and proposed modification to the borderline does not create inconsistencies with the future land map use of the city. Uh, utility Easements have been adjusted based on the new lot lines to ensure utility provides, providers have sufficient area for exiting future developments. The plan modifies the existing lots to create a 6.06 .06 acre lot with existing single family home on the north side of the subject site. The remainder of the area will remain a single lot. Access to the utility easements to both lots are provided in public streets south of Morgan and Bruni Parkway, directly above each property providing required access. Staff recommendation, the staff has reviewed the proposed boundary line adjustment and found that the proposal is consistent with chapter 410, subdivision regulation of Warrington Municipal Code and does not create any conflict with the comprehensive plan Staff recommends approval of the plat as submitted. Thank you, Mr. Burks. So, do we open that back up? Or? Yeah, this is. For the record, this is Bart Corman, Lewis and Beatty, Surveyors and Engineers. Thank I'm here to, to answer any questions uh, that anybody may have. But basically, we're simply taking Mr. Roadheaver's house that's on about three acres and making it about a six acre tract. He owned uh, the tract, obviously, to the south. Uh, and he's just putting more acreage with the house. Uh, he's wanting to sell the house. And I believe the buyers wanted more of a buffer from any future development. Um, and so, so that's, that's we're why we're here adjustment. presenting that. Yeah. And that's why we're adjusting the boundary. Makes uh, sense. No, no, no. You're not going to see any construction, anything else that, that I'm aware of. It's just basically we're moving the boundary. Makes sense. Thank you, Bart. Thank you. All right. Ready to move on guys. You have to ask for public comment. Okay, uh, so is there any public comment on uh, the Goodfellow Boundary Line Adjustment? Okay, this is Mary Ryan again in Forest Ridge. There you go, Mary. So that's the, that's the letter that I received. I apologize. Right. No, that's fine. So uh, you're not going to build at all on those lots? At, at this time, there's no, that's not the plan of, 
that's somebody's plan down the road, what they do with that 13 acre lot there. Well, that, I mean, because I live at Forest Ridge and I'm right. down right by where that come that would come in at. Right. So um, a, that's why I bought here. <laughs> I don't want to see houses behind me. Well, but that road, that road, Bruni Parkway goes back through there. That's where it stops there at that fence line, correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. And Bruni yeah. Road stops there. And if you make the ride on the Forest Ridge, that's where I'm at. Right, right. Be right behind my house is where the park and the, the little pond, the little lake is. So you're on down around the corner from Forest Ridge, down by the Binkley Lake. Correct. Yeah. So that's that's my concern is because it stated in the letter that it was uh, going to be zoned for medium to high density residential. So that's my concern is that are they going to build are they going to want to build houses there? And I know that's not the plan now, right. but like you said, if you go ahead and approve it. You don't know what somebody's going to do two years down the road. Well, to my knowledge, Mr. Burke, correct me if I'm wrong. This was already zoned that, correct? Yes, it is. So the, that is already zoned that. That's not the, what we're doing tonight. All we're doing tonight is adjusting that line and adding more acreage to that gentleman's house who owns that whole property. And all he's doing is redividing that and making two lots, the 13-acre lot and the six-acre lot, because he's wanting to sell his house. He's one of them, and the gentleman that's buying the house, or the family that's buying the house, wants more acreage, so he's allowing to do that. And, and to do that, he has to get a adjustment. That's all we're doing tonight is going to vote whether or not we approve the adjustment. That's it. Correct, Bart? Bart, is that correct? That that is correct. We are just moving the line, uh, and if uh, the the larger tract is developed. Uh, that would all come back through a different process through the preliminary plat and final plat and construction plan and, process. But it's been zoned that for a long time, as I understood. It, it was rezoned that uh, prior to the recession in about 07. Correct. Uh, when when Forest Ridge was developed too, they, they, those two were on track to develop one right after the other, probably within right. about six months of each other. And one barely made it and the other one didn't make it at all. That's right. Thank you, Bart. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. But you will be a not, you will be notified if there's any ever some way, like Mr. Gerville said, keep an eye out. But uh, you'll know whether or not there's going to be some kind of development in coming in there at one time down the road. So, but at this time, we don't know of anything. So, All right, okay. Any other comment? Great. Any other comment, Brandy? Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. We appreciate. The uh, I don't. Oh, I don't see any other comments. Okay. So, our next public comment will be the Park Hills Preliminary Plat Subdivision Dash Eighty Seven. Mr. Burke, you want to bring us up to speed on that? It's the Park Hills Subdivision SUBD Dash Eighty Seven, and it's thirty-five point three four acres. Uh, on the west side of South Morgan Street, across from Brink Binkley Woods and Specter Lake. Uh, it's a preliminary plat. Uh, the applicant is Ben Beckermeyer Construction, LLC, 27086 Courtney Place Circle, Warrington, Missouri, 6338. Um, the Corey Eckenville of Ben Beckermeyer's Construction has submitted an application for a preliminary plat for the 35.34 acre track of land located west side of South Morgan Street across from Binkley Woods and Specter Way. The request is to establish 94 new single family residential lots with associated infrastructure to support the development. The plan is also include one lot for an existing residential structure and a second lot that is intended to be sold to an adjacent parcel owner. Additional lots for mail service, common ground and stormwater facility are provided. The future land plan with the city of uh, Warrington comprehensive plan designate the subject site as single family residential. The comprehensive plan notes that new residential subdivisions should meld into an existing neighborhood 
in the plan notes a desire to cover their streets network and numerous cul-de-sacs access to the proposed subdivision is from south morgan street and from coleman to the north it should be noted the connection to the north is through an industrial area um, the staff would note the following features of the proposed preliminary plat the purpose includes crossing of a creek on the site and, and dedicate this infrastructure to the city for future maintenance while this Crossing allowed for two access points to the subdivision, Coleman Drive and South Morgan Street. It does dedicate an expensive infrastructure to the city for future maintenance. Um, sidewalks are included on one side of all proposed streets and located within the proposed right of way, section 410.140. And the sidewalks are proposed to construct, to be constructed, no construction contribution to the special sidewalk fund is required. South Morgan Street and existing streets does not have sidewalks and the escrow for further construction of this should be provided. Um, the plans, the plan area includes section mailbox and section 410-145 on lots two and 101, uh, preliminary stormwater design, Includes curb and gutter drains, the storm inlet that are in, that are then piped to a stormwater management area, center of the site, and exit creeks, exiting creeks service the site. Section four one zero point one eight zero. The final design ensuring that the purpose system is approximately designed appropriately designed to address the design stormwater event will be submitted during the construction slash improvement plan uh, process. Uh, common ground areas are included on the sites. These areas include the stormwater retention pond, discharge area, and the postal CMU area. Section one, section 410.150 requires residential projects to provide park area and open space accessible to the public or in lieu thereof at the uh, option of the city, a payment of the money into the, in the amount in accordance with the defined schedule. Um, uh, prior to approval for a final plat, uh, completion of escrow would be required. Section 410110, uh, staff recommendation. Staff has a review, proposed preliminary plat, and found that the proposed is consistent with chapter 410, subdivision regulation of Warrington Municipal Code, assuming the zoning from AIC to R3 is approved. Assuming that the zoning for AG to R3 is approved, the staff recommends approval of preliminary plat with the following conditions. Uh, construction access shall be from Coleman Drive and escrow for construction of sidewalks along South Morgan Street shall be provided in accordance with section 410.140.C. Required parking lanes per ordinance 2550, section 530.040, and parking uh, striping plan shall be provided. Uh, required floor plans permitting the studies for the purpose of proposed work in the regulations shall be obtained. Included water valves on the main at the intersection of lot 60. Storm sewer needs to be extended past the property lines and fire hydrants need to be installed at the end of the water mains in the cul-de-sacs. Thank you, Mr. Burks. Brandy, anyone from the public want to speak on behalf of that tonight? I am, oh, there's one, Brad. Mr. Buscruz. Yeah, can you explain to me, uh, Mr. Graville, what the parking lanes, what that new code is, what that's going to, uh, how this is going to affect this uh, subdivision uh, as far as uh, parking on, on the roads during inclement uh, weather? Well, I mean, they'll have to move it based on the snow schedule. Um, but there will be that line in which it has to be parked. I, I don't know that I really understand the question. 
Well, I guess I'm, uh, well, with Forest Ridge, we have the problem with the uh, not being able to get snow plows down to it when, when they park on both sides of the road. Was this supposed to uh, help uh, uh, alleviate this pro problem or is this, is that what this is going, going to do? This uh, parking lanes is something new? Uh, the, my understanding is that was the purpose of the parking lanes, but obviously, you know, that was something the Board of Aldermen passed um, was that so it would it would create that passing in which the uh, uh, snow plows of the other vehicles could go through. I don't know, Brandy, do you have any insight into that? You're muted. Sorry, um, that is correct. It was so that a way um, we could get people to stay inside the lines and they would be able to still get a snow plow between the two. Okay, and then I have another question. If uh, Coleman Road, if the west side is not going to be done, or it may, may not be done, does that mean all the construction traffic is going to be coming down South Morgan Street? And on Coleman Road, it was stated that uh, it, it's a minor, and you have to re, uh, help me with this. I'm not familiar with, uh, with the street part, but it is a minor road, and it is 23 to 24 foot wide, and it would have to be made bigger. Well, South Morgan is only 21 foot wide. So what is going to happen to it? I mean, this, this is a very well-traveled road already. And if we get uh, another, let's see, you got another 100 lots or so on here. So you're talking average two cars. That's another 200 cars a day, probably three or four times a day up and down the road with both the uh, with parks all on the east side, how is that going to affect, or is that going to affect our road, or is there something going to have to be done to it? Good questions, Mr. Busy Cruz. Uh, Because it sounds like that's only going to be one way in. So I'm, I'm just, I'm just, you know, we got a lot of kids to walk, people to walk and everything to the parks and different places. So I'm just with right. uh, concrete trucks, delivery truck, lumber trucks. It's going to be a, uh, and being the one of the narrow, one of the nar narrower streets in town, I'm just uh, yeah. a little curious of what we're going to do with it. That'll be that'll be up for up for discussion when we open up the regular meeting and discuss this uh, subdivision plan in the meeting. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Hmm. Brandy, anyone else want to speak tonight on the last public comment section? I do not see anyone. Okay. Well, we appreciate everybody's concern, comments tonight from the community. We appreciate your support and your help. At least one night, one thing tonight was good to hear that everybody's supportive of growth and uh, and change. Just wants to do, be seen done in the right manner. And I think we could all agree on that. That's something that is in the best benefit of the city and the community as a whole. So, let's go ahead and close our public comments and open up our regular plan and zoning commission meeting tonight. And the first order of business will be the minutes from the February the fourth meeting. Uh, which is the one that kind of got derailed due to the technology problems, but we still had a meeting. So uh, entertain a motion to accept or change or anything that you... I make a motion to accept the meeting minutes as presented for the February meeting. Thank you, Mr. Cullum. I will second that. I have a motion by Mr. Cullum, second by Mr. Deets to approve the minutes as submitted from the February 4th, 2021 PNZ meeting. I he positively made the second. Thank you. Mike Cooper. Oh, Mr. Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Deitch. That was Mr. Cooper. Sorry about that. Uh, so we'll uh, Mr. Cullivan, seconded by Mr. Cooper. Any other questions or comments? Roll call vote. Mr. Holt? Yes. Mr. Costello? Yes. Mr. Deitch? Yes. Mr. Cullum? Yes. Mr. Barton? Yes. 
Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Durbin okay. and Mr. Priest are both absent. Motion passes six to zero with two absent and two vacancies. Next order of business will be section 405.280 telecommunications towers and facilities, ADM-115 continued from the last meeting. Seems like we've been talking about this for a month, uh, but here we go. Any other questions or comments about this? It was kind of a, uh, just cleaning up some of the language there. Does anybody have any questions or comments from the commission? Yeah. Uh, Rich, Eric here, a uh, question on definition M, microwave radio. Uh, it says, I think it's a typo, shall mean line of sign radio. I think that means line of sight radio transmission. Uh, just want to make sure that that uh, spelling correction is, is uh, amended there. Under definition, it's definition M. Microwave radio. Microwave radio shall mean a line of sign radio. I think it means line of sight. Just want to make clarification and correction. That's what seems to be a typo there. I'll agree with you. I don't know. It, it, it should be line of sight. I'm just, if anyone has any clarification, uh, please add to that. But Line of okay. sign isn't a thing. Okay. Thank you. Good catch. We're going to give you the red pen from now on. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other questions or comments before we take a roll call vote or entertain a motion? I'll entertain a motion then. I'll second uh, as long as we can uh, change definition M to, from line of sign to line of sight. Who made the first motion? Oh, I thought you did. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I'll make the motion to uh, approve uh, this. Uh, well, what is it? Where are we at now? I lost it now. Yeah, ADM 115, section 405.280, as long as we change uh, definition M, uh, the definition there from line of sign to line of sight. Thank you, Mr. Holt. We have a motion by Mr. Holt, second by Mr. Cullum to approve. 405.280 telecommunications towers and facilities, ADM-115, as long as the changes are made. Any other questions or comments? Roll call vote. Mr. Holt? Yes. Mr. Costello? Yes. Mr. Deach? Yes. Mr. Cullum? Yes. Mr. Barton? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Motion passes six to zero, two absent. We'll move on down to section 405.281, construction and deployment of small, small wireless facilities, ADM-116, continued from the last meeting. Again, just cleaning up the language there. Any other questions or comments from the commission? Any, entertain a motion. I'll make the motion to uh, recommend approval of ADM 116 to section 405.281 for uh, construction and deployment of small wireless facilities. I'll second that. Thank you. I have a motion by Mr. Costello, second by Mr. Deeks to approve 405.281 construction and deployment of small wireless facilities, ADM 116. Any other questions or comments? Roll call vote. Mr. Deech? Yes. Mr. Cullum? Yes. Mr. Barton? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Holt? Yes. Mr. Costello? Yes. Motion passes six to zero with two absent. Next order of business. We have uh, withdrawn the last next two items from the applicant and we'll move on down to section number six, which is a good fellow boundary line adjustment, lot 4A and 4B subdivision dash 86. Uh, as Mr. Uh, Corman explained a while ago, it's just basically taking that property and divide it into a larger lot for that one that's got the house on it. Nothing else at this time. Any got a question or comments for anyone at this time or any discussion by the board? Hearing none, we'll go ahead and entertain a motion then. I'll make a motion to approve the boundary adjustment for lots 4A and 4B of the Goodfellow subdivision as presented. 
I'll second that. Got a motion to approve it, Mr. Combs. Second by Mr. Deach to approve the good fellow battery line adjustment, Lot 4A and 4B subdivision 86. Any other question or comments by the commission? Hearing none, we'll take a roll call vote. Mr. Cullen? Yes. Mr. Barton? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Holt? Yes. Mr. Costello? Yes. Mr. Deach? Yes. Motion passes six to zero with two absent. We'll move on to item number seven, Park Hills zone change, ZC-67 from Ag to R3. And this is our time to talk now, Commission. I know a lot of you have some comments that you'd like to make and uh, have questions for anybody. Feel free to ask at this time and I'll open up the dialogue for the board. Just take your name for the record so we can know who's talking, okay? This is Mike Cooper. Um, earlier, I, I had seen a different map or, or uh, the plot plan uh, up on the on the thing, and that changed quite a bit. From have they answered a lot of the questions for uh, the problem with uh, Coleman Road? We have talked to them about Pullman Road. Uh, Chris Greville, do you want to address that? So, um, yeah, the, the, there's, there's a couple of questions that staff has on Coleman Road with regards to the safety, the widening. It is an offsite improvement. I know there's been some conversations about a development agreement of some type to improve the road, but... <clears throat> Staff believes there's some additional things that need to be looked at from a safety to an entryway on Highway U. Now, my understanding was with regards to Coleman Road, for the first half of it, they were going to be allowed to use it for construction, um, that it would be okay for that entrance and exit. And I know that was one of the questions that came up and you know, would be something we'd work out with them before Board of uh, Aldermen consideration. Um, you know, Ultimately, the condition that Coleman Road is in right now Staff feels that, you know, the majority of that traffic is going to exit out there. Um, so it has to be looked at as a major road and would probably or will probably if that property to the west developed uh, be the service road for the, that subdivision as well, which, you know, if you had the same zoning would be, I think it's, I, Brandy, I don't know if you remember what the number is, but, you know, pretty substantial number of houses as well. So um, you know, looking at making sure that that is a safe ingress egress for all these residential homes, uh, staff feels is important to get worked out, whether it's with the developer or with the city, uh, before the maximum allotted number of homes would be built. Thank you. Um, I have comment. This is Eric Holt. Um, on you know within this um, ZC-67 PDF, uh, we have this uh, FEMA flood hazard map. Um, I have a couple questions around that, and uh, I'll maybe wait till we pull it up a little bit. Um, the the map itself, I I, I like. I, we don't. I guess we don't necessarily have to do this tonight, but. Um, I would like that to be interpreted maybe with a legend of some sort, because I have no idea what on the FEMA, on the FEMA flood hazard map, what those different colors represent. I'm assuming it's varying levels of risk and flood risk um, as you know, shown as a buffer on that property, but I just don't know what the magnitude of those risks are uh, on that FEMA flood map. Uh, so hoping for a little clarification there. Like I said, that's maybe not something we clarify tonight. Um, where I'm kind of going with this is, you know, Mr. Graville talked about the um, hydrologic study that we can look at on site and off sites. Um, how far off sites, you know, can we include uh, as part of this study? I, are, are we looking at the uh, the length of Big Creek to include in this hydrologic study, or is it is it confined in any way? I was kind of hoping to get some clarity around that. Yeah, that that's a great question. So. You know, and, and I want to make sure this is clear. We cannot put it on Mr. Beckemeyer to um, make those offsite improvements. 
um, you know, make those his responsibility. There is an, an ability to basically, you know, charge what's known as an impact fee, which is not currently part of our code and something that we may make a recommendation on in the future to address some of these substandard uh, stormwater drainage issues and road issues as well. Um, we're pretty good on water and sewer, but those are two things we're re recognizing that we do have some of the feeder streets to be substandard. So, you know, we can enter into an agreement, but what we have to do, Mr. Holt, Commissioner Holt, is we have to essentially control the amount of growth. You know, that's why the recommendation is only for a part of this to be rezoned so that we have time to assess and figure out a way. And, obviously incentivize a developer to help pay the costs of improvement to this Coleman Road to make sure that it's safe and whatnot and maybe address some of the stormwater issues. Now, a property owner is really not responsible for stormwater that is um, already created in an issue, but we can absolutely make sure in the engineering part of this, and one of the things I'm sure Mr. Burks is making a note of is you know, to really make sure we're digging in and understanding the stormwater situation surrounding it to see, to really assure that we're not, you know, adding to the problem that may exist right now. Perfect. And, and do you know, Mr. Graville, if, you know, when we run a hydro, hydrologic study, um, is that information in any way translated? Do we send that to FEMA for um, updated flood hazard maps? I mean, is there, is there, because I don't want to disconnect between a, an updated hydro study for a piece of property and have uh, a disconnect between, you know, that updated information and, and maybe an out of date FEMA flood hazard. That's, that's going to kind of uh, shine a light in a couple different spots. And, and I, I just want to prevent, you know, that kind of disconnect. Is that, is there a link there between those updated studies and yeah, uh, think, the FEMA I flood hazards? I think what we would do, Commissioner Holt, is I think Mr. Burks, you know, let's make a note that, you know, we'll talk to their engineer about, you know, really giving a note and an explanation paragraph and delineating, you know, where the stormwater issues are, where the current up-to-date stormwater maps are, you know, are reflected on the plans with a legend. I mean, essentially, we can go back to the applicant and say, can you provide us this information as part of your drawing? Um, and, and I'm sure that, you know, it's probably not that big of an issue because it's probably on there. It's just not in any kind of, you know, you know, non engineering interpretive way. Okay. All right. Perfect. That's all I had. Can I ask a question now? Yeah, go ahead. Scott. Okay. So, um, so we're talking about rezone and we're taking into account the, um, the, the preliminary plat request, subdivision request is part of it. So I'm trying to get an understanding on the original request to rezone and now the request not to rezone the Western portion only to uh, rezone a, a smaller portion that uh, is, is suitable uh, compared to the whole parcel. And the request was for 35.34 acres. So my question is, is 35.34 acres, the entire project, including the Western portion that is now being pulled off of the request or is the 35.34 what's left after the Western area is not included? I think a great question. Uh, so I, I, the way I understand it, and Brandy, correct me if I'm wrong, is the uh, 35 acres is the entire site. So can, Brandy, can you scroll down to the recommendation of staff? Yes. Okay, so the subject, um, okay, can you keep going down? Is that it? Mm -hmm. Yes. There we go, right there, right there. All right, um, so, you know, essentially what we're saying, so essentially what we're saying is their application is for the entire 35 acres. What we're saying is from a staff perspective is that everything east of Big Creek is not ready for development because the infrastructure 
to handle that traffic coming off there to really divert it off Morgan, which you know Man, is West. an older street, um, is not in place yet because we've not, you know, we really need to analyze and see what that is. So essentially, it's an artificial line that we're recommending being drawn that gives them some ability to develop that front part, which we believe, as from a staff perspective, can handle that development and its capacity now as long as. The stormwater is contained on the site and none, no additional stormwater issues are, are, are created. Um, so it, staff's recommendation is essentially an artificial line drawn, even though their, their uh, request is for the entire parcel. And I know that's very unusual, but the purpose of it is to make sure that we're not creating a overdevelopment right in the heart of the city where there may be an unsafe intersection off you know, the Chambers Road, or there may be, you know, that we're planning this out because it's not really well set up, or do you, you know, stub it out to a different direction? I mean, I think those are discussions we've got to work out with the developer, but it does make sense on that one part that would access Morgan, that development be approved from staff perspective. That the road would. Okay, so, um, so in, in keeping with, and I understand, and I, I think when that conversation about leaving the western portion out of the consideration for the time being because it's not yet suitable for it makes sense um my concern is how do we vote on a request to rezone 35 acres without having something that clearly defines the line of what we're rezoning and I think, I think to Mr. Beckermeyer's point, I, I, you know, he made the point, and you know, immediately that he was unaware. I believe I don't want to speak for him um, that that had been the recommendation, and maybe it came as a surprise. So, if that's the case, I mean, this is not something that we were trying to keep. It's something we're, you know, really trying to process. Um, you know, planning and zoning obviously has the option to hold this until the next month's meeting and request, you know, revised drawings from the developer with this in mind, because <clears throat> if you wanted to move it forward tonight, you would approve it subject to those conditions and they would have to meet those conditions for the Board of Aldermen to make consideration at the next Board of Aldermen meeting. If you guys wanna see the drawings as part of the planning and zoning to really be able to conceptualize what it looks at like, and also allow the planning and zoning officer, Mr. Burks, to get answers to some of the questions brought up tonight. You can, you know, obviously uh, make a motion and consider a motion to postpone it to the next month's meeting. Well, that's kind of where I'm heading with the conversation is that um, while I recognize that the comprehensive plan looks at this as a long-term R3 area, and that's what we're considering, um, I also think that when we're considering putting 100 homes that we primarily access off of Morgan for the foreseeable future, that um, I think we maybe should have a more clear picture. We don't have any picture right now um, in the absence of the, the revised drawings. So my personal feeling is that I, I really think rather than to punt and say subject to these things before the Board of Aldermen meeting, I think part of the planning and zoning, uh, uh, I guess mandate or, or, or uh, you know, the charge that we should yeah. be participating in is that we should be doing some planning and not just the zoning. And we can't do the planning if we can't, can't see what it is that's being forwarded up to the board. Good comments, Mr. Costello. I totally agree that um, we got to, Sometimes we're putting the cart before the horse by, I think we're all in agreement that we wanna see movement and we wanna see progress and we wanna see growth. But if we don't have any infrastructure and roads in place to put these places, I think we've already seen that with the other thing too, that uh, we've gotta start getting a better view of what these roads are gonna look like before they start putting a hundred houses in there. Uh, so good comments, Mr. Costello, and thank you for bringing those forth. I would certainly like to see a, um, a plan that takes into account the conditions and the questions that we've raised tonight. And I also have some sympathy for uh, Mr. Nardwald and others who um, 
are looking at the possibility of increased flood water in times of heavy rain. So um, I would certainly like to see this tabled and brought back at a later date with a more detailed view as to uh, what it's going to look like along Morgan Street. And, and hearing yes. that, Mr. Deach, I would also like to commend Mr. Beckemeyer, though, for saying that he's going to do everything within his power to make sure that he f follows all the rules to do deal with the stormwater. That, and uh, like Mr. Gravel said, he can't be responsible for down the road, but at least he does recognize that there are issues there, and he is going to do his part to make sure that he's not part of the problem, that um, he, he might not be the solution, but he will not add to being a part of the problem. So I commend him on that, too. Mr. Cullum, you had a question or comment? No, that was um, it. This is Mr. Cullum, and I just um, go right along with what Mr. Deach and Mr. Costello said. I would like to hold on this topic because the only true visual that we have is everything to the east, but we, we don't have a visual of what's east and west side. It's just the right. single statement from staff. So okay. that was my recommendation as well. Anybody else on the commission have a comment this time? All right. Well, I'll entertain a motion. Okay, I was going to say I'll. Uh, Go ahead, Mr. Costello. I'll make a motion that we uh, table the consideration of ZC67 Park Hill subdivision um, to allow the developer uh, the opportunity to uh, bring back a revised request that identifies the area that is now. Uh, the smaller area that does not include the west portion of the entire development uh, in keeping with the staff recommendation to uh, leave the western portion of the parcel out of the consideration. I'll second that. So we have a motion by Mr. Costello, second by Mr. Deach to table this until we get a better uh, handle on what's happening there. Uh, does anybody else have any comments or questions at this time? This recommendation will go to the board of aldermen. Uh, Mr. Graville, did you have any comments? Ms. Walters? I do not. Okay. We'll entertain a uh, roll call vote at this time then to table this. Mr. Costello? Yes. Mr. Deach? Yes. Mr. Cullen? Yes. Mr. Barton? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. Mr. Holt? Yes. Motion passes six to zero with two absent. We'll go on to number eight, Park Hills Preliminary Plat Subdivision 87. Uh, I, I think in order to do a vote on sub D-87, it assumed approval of ZC-67, is that correct, Mr. Barton? I would, I think so. That is correct, sir. I think that assumption was in there. But do we need to take a, do we still have to make a motion for that, uh, Ms. Walters? Yes, sir. To table it as well, correct? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Holt? Yep, I'll make the motion to uh, go ahead and table uh, sub D-87 alongside uh, of ZC-67. Uh, until we can uh, get a uh, uh, little better parameters on 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 how to proceed with the eastern portion um, as we as we've tabled the last section. I can second that. Motion by Mr. Holt, second by Mr. Costello to table this as well. Plant subdivision 87. Any other questions or comments? Roll call vote. Mr. Holt. Yes. Mr. Costello. Yes. Mr. Beach. Yes. Mr. Collin? Yes. Mr. Martin? Yes. Mr. Cooper? Yes. All right, before we close the meeting, I know I want to say thank you to the city staff for spending a lot of time on this issue, along with the other issue uh, over on the other that got withdrawn. And uh, appreciate all your hard work and uh, uh, keep up the good work. And hopefully that at least tonight I heard good things about people what are supporting growth and supporting change and supporting uh, more houses, but just 
making sure we get the right uh, structure to it. And that's, that's good news. So I'm gonna close the meeting and open it up to Mr. Burks if you have any comments. Mr. Burks? I think he might, maybe he's muted. How about Mr. Okay. Gorilla? Yeah. Mr. Gorilla, you got any parting words? Nope, just it was good to see everybody. It was. Um, Brandy, do we think, Ms. Walters, do we have, as of this time, we'll have something next month for sure, I'm sure. Yes, we do. Actually, Tim was muted. I'm okay. sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Burks. <laughs> I just want to thank you for for uh, putting up with me tonight. Uh, it's my first night. Yeah, and, uh, glad to have you on board, buddy. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, fantastic job. Yeah, looking, looking forward looking forward to working with you guys. All right. Uh, well, if no one else has anything for the good of the group, uh, Mr. Deach, take it away. I will make the motion then that we adjourn for the evening. Seconded. I'll second it. All right, Mr. Cooper, all in favor say aye. Aye. Good night. See you next month.